wrote an international president-elect, Ravi, past, present and future officers of Rotary International, guests and fellow Rotarians. It's wonderful to be back in India, and particularly here in Pune. And I would like to thank past president Raja Sabu, past president Kalyan Banerjee and director Sushil Gupta for helping me in making the arrangements for this visit. It's five years since I was last in India. Then I was by myself because my wife had had an accident. But this time, I'm pleased to see that she is with me, June. <clears throat> Much has happened in these five years. India has been declared polio-free, a remarkable achievement when you consider the numbers involved. And it would not have been done without the work of Indian Rotarians and the support of the Indian government. But you must not be complacent. You must continue to be vigilant and ensure that proper surveillance is carried out. I don't wish to take too long with you today because there are many who will be addressing this summit far more knowledgeable on this particular subject than I am. I wish to speak briefly about one of the six areas of focus under the Future Vision Plan, basic education and literacy. In the words of Nelson Mandela, no country can prosper if its future generations are not educated. Rotary's 34,000 clubs and 1.2 million Rotarians serve communities around the world, each with their own unique problems and needs. Rotarians have tried over the years to adapt and improve the way they have responded to those needs. I congratulate those Rotarians in this area of the Rotary world for the inventiveness of this particular programme the total literacy in South East Asia. It's called, and I think this is very clever, Teach, T-E-A-C-H. I'm sure you'll be receiving more information about the details of each particular component of that phrase later in the summit. As I have read, as I came here on my travel from Mumbai uh, this morning, uh, each has a special meaning. T for teacher support with volunteer giving, supplementary training. This is important because 31% of the secondary school teachers in the low-income countries are not professionally trained. E is for e-learning, with more than 1,500 e-learning centres already established. A is for adult literacy, with a goal to make one million adults literate within the next year. C is for child development, with the emphasis, I hope, on child labour, which in my opinion is a scandal of the 21st century. H is to make schools happy places, where, as we have heard, there will be facilities for washing and sanitation. I firmly believe that it is most important that we have the girl population educated. If you educate the boy child, it improves the man. But if you educate the girl child, it improves the community. It is vitally important that each Rotary Club establishes a relationship with the school in its vicinity 
or helps indeed to establish one. By giving voluntary help after school programmes is one of the things a club can do. By sponsoring school feeding programmes to prevent health-related absences from school and to establish a school library. It is a sorry fact that in the 21st century, 75 million children, 41 million of whom are girls, have no access to education. As I said a moment ago, this is a visionary programme you have established here and which has been recognised, I understand, by the Indian government in signing a memorandum of understanding. I wish you all well and trust that all your efforts will bear great fruit. What can the Rotary Foundation do, however, to support you? Rotary's foundation, Rotary's charity, indeed, Rotary's only charity. How can we help? Well, there are grants available. Under the Future Vision Plan, the Foundation offers two types of grants, district grants and global grants. The district grants are block grants that allow clubs and districts to address immediate needs in their communities and abroad. Districts may request up to 50% of their district dedicated funds for one grant annually. The district manages and disburses the funds to support district and club sponsors' activities, including vocational training teams, scholarships and human service projects, provided they are aligned with Rotary's mission. Global grants offer opportunities to participate in high-impact activities with support from the Foundation, ranging from $15,000 to $200,000. These grants fund large international humanitarian projects, vocational training teams and scholarships that have sustainable, measurable outcomes in one or more of the areas of focus. In other words, projects which will continue to thrive after retaining involvement has ceased. Why has this new grants model been introduced? Several reasons. The Foundation recognised that it could better serve clubs and districts by streamlining operations, by reducing the number of types of grants to two. Rotary will have greater impact and support more effective and sustainable humanitarian projects. A survey was done a little while ago that the Foundation was spending 20% of its annual programmes budget on higher high-impact grants and 80% on short-term projects with less impact. It was also found that the cost of administering some of the smaller grants was as much as the grant itself. But the grants which the Foundation can give are only limited by the contributions which we receive. According to the 2013-2014 Foundation Annual Report, the top grant country recipient was India. One of the top giving countries, I understand was third in that category, was India. This is excellent and I congratulate you on these efforts. I have been a Rotarian for a long time, 44 years, and seen many changes in that time. But the one thing that has remained constant is Rotarians working quietly in their clubs to assist those in their communities and communities in other parts of the world whom they will never see, but for whom they knew is a great the real work of Rotary is not shaped by the Board of Directors of Rotary International or by the Board of Trustees, but by Rotarians just like you. This is why I'm so pleased to be with you today. Thank you for the service that you're giving to Rotary. Sir Winston Churchill once said, you make a living 
by what you get. You make a life by what you give. What you are doing with this program will be giving many people a far, far better life. And on behalf of the trustees, I would thank you for doing that.